Hi, I'm Mike Edwards, the website is DIY Doctor, and today we're going to be talking about installing a power shower. Um, the, the power shower in this property is um, the controls are on the wall. Quite clearly this is a, a hollow wall and the valves etc are, uh, are behind that all obviously thoroughly checked so that they're not leaking within the wall which is always a bit of a pain um, and they they feed in this case quite a large overhead shower rose um, so it gives a, a really really effective shower um, the valves on this particular shower uh, that, that work in two, in two ways the, the, the top one um, simply turns the shower if I can do this without getting soaking wet turns the shower on and off and regulates the pressure that's coming out of the rose and the bottom valve here um, adjusts the temperature. Now this shower is called a power shower because it's fed from a pump. So we will go um, underneath the, uh, the vanity unit in a second and show you how the pump operates. To get the water, to get hot and cold water to the power shower unit that you've just seen, uh, requires the use of a pump. Now this particular pump is called a twin impeller pump and it pumps the, both the hot and the cold water up to um, the kind of minimum mains pressure, it's about one bar, one point one and a half bars um, and that gives you a really good shower. Now the way that the, the pump works, there are, there are sensor valves in the pump, they sense the tap being turned on, the taps that I've just shown you they sense the shower valves being turned on um, and that obviously means that the shower is calling for water. Once the pump senses that then it, uh, it flicks the switch and starts the pump and the hot and the cold are pumped to the shower itself. The feed, the water comes from um, in the hot uh, water supply case, um, the hot water comes from the tank, the hot water tank in the airing cupboard and the cold water comes from the cold water tank in the loft. Um, you can see more about those on our um, hot water and cold water domestic supply videos on DIY Doctor. Um, but the cold water comes from the tank in the loft. Now that tank should be a minimum of a 100 gallon tank to feed a power shower like this. The reason for that is that these um, these, these showers use an awful lot of water um, and it isn't very long before um, the, it can drain the, the tank. The, the tank can be drained but using a twin impeller pump the tank can be drained more quickly than it's allowed to refill. Um, so a minimum of a 100 gallon tank in the loft to feed a power shower um, and the hot water supply comes from the, uh, the, the cylinder as we've just said. Um, once again throughout these videos you can see that the gate valve that supplies the hot water to the shower um, is, is fully labelled um, and you'll see from the airing cover that the cold supply is labelled as well. So in 99% of cases um, the pump will come with a rubber um, cushioning mat on the bottom and that simply sits on the floor and absorbs the vibration from the pump and that vibration isn't transferred from the pump to the floor it simply sits it's absorbed by that rubber cushion so remember when using a, a shower pump don't fix it to the uh, to the surface make sure that it sits on its rubber cushioning mat and that will absorb the vibration okay the final part of our installing a power shower video obviously we've got to get some hot water um, to, to the power shower the cold as we've said comes straight down from the cold water tank in the loft and the hot comes from the hot water cylinder which I've got in front of me here. The first way of connecting to the hot water cylinder for supply to the power shower is via something called an Essex flange. An Essex flange is um, a, a special bit of kit that screws into the side of the cylinder. Unfortunately it's at the back of this cylinder so we can't see it. Um, but it fixes into the side of the cylinder and it goes halfway into the cylinder. So the hot water that is taken from the cylinder is from the centre. Now this ensures that no air is taken with any water. Um, 
and because if air is allowed to feed into the pump, the pump will consider itself running dry and it will die within about five or six seconds. So the Essex flange reaches into the middle of the tank to take the hot water from the middle. Um, the other reason for using a specialist flange is that um, it uh, allows the hot water to the power shower to be the first water taken from the tank. It has priority over anything else that is called for. Um, so if you turn your bath tap on at the same time as running the power shower, the Essex flange will make absolutely sure that the water for your power shower is has priority um, because the, the power shower pump, the pump to the power shower, mustn't be allowed to run dry. So the Essex flange is a great way of ensuring that A, no air comes out of the tank to, to feed the power pump, um, and secondly, that it is a priority valve. It makes absolutely sure that it's, uh, it feeds the pump before it feeds anything else. The other way of getting hot water from your cylinder to the, um, part the pump um, that you saw in the bathroom is via a Surrey flange. Now the Surrey flange differs from the Essex flange in so much as it's fitted to the top of the cylinder uh, where the hot water ordinarily comes out. Um, the, the Surrey flange reaches down into about a third of the way down the cylinder, once again ensuring that no air is taken when the pump calls for water. Um, and also it remains again the priority use of this cylinder. So when the power shower is turned on, the pump is called for to provide water. Um, and so the Surrey flange and the Essex flange ensure that that hot water coming from the cylinder to the uh, pump are the first things that come out of this cylinder even if you turn your bath tap on or your hot tap in your in your bathroom so that's the correct way to feed a shower pump um, is through a surrey or an essex flange um, manufacturers of shower pumps less or a better bar um, some of them will allow a connection to be made directly into the hot water pipe as it comes out of the cylinder. Um, that connection should still be the first takeoff of hot water from the cylinder, i.e. it should give the, the pump priority over everything else. And that can be achieved by teeing in at a distance of about 100 millimetres below the level of the hot water pipe coming out of the top of the cylinder. So a T connection can be made, um, uh, taking away the use of the Essex or the Surrey flange that we've just spoken about, but only on pumps uh, that are about a bar in pressure and only to manufacturer's instructions. Ideally, you would always use an Essex or a Surrey flange, but with some pumps you can T directly into the pipe, providing the manufacturer's instructions are followed um, appropriately.